Hello folks, welcome back. So in the last one we went over some sculpting techniques and the materials and everything like that and different tools that can be used, but this time let's talk about foliage. So there are some things about the foliage thingy that's just a little messed up. So right here is your foliage editing mode, it'll give you all these options right here. And in your infinity blade packs you can find all kinds of cool stuff. So, for instance, I've got this grass. I'm going to use this small clump. No. Wait a minute. One of these has really good grass. Is it the plains grass? Maybe it's the plains grass. But just kind of look through all your infinity blade packs and you'll find some really good grass. That looks pretty good. So yeah, the Infinity Blade Grassland Pack, that looks pretty good. There's also in the Assets Pack, it's got little tufts of grass. So for instance, you can have like this one. Let me knock that down quite a bit, knock that up a bit. And then you can have different grass spread through. So, to show y'all, the cool thing about foliage painting is it'll match the slope. So you see it's matching the curve of the hill as it goes up. Now there are certain things that I personally don't like for that to happen with. Uh, you may like it, you may not. Uh, if you have this issue and you don't like it, then let me show you something real quick. Get out of here, get out of here, pine tree. Alright, so for instance, I don't particularly like for the trees to do like that because I've spent a lot of times in forests and for the most part trees even if they're on a hill I mean there's an instance there's instances where the trees will do that but it's usually like the tree is starting to die and fall for the most part trees tend to grow up um, so what you can do is you can highlight the tree and there's a bunch of stuff you can do for instance there's the density right here which will be how densely they're placed so like if I knock this down to one then you'll see it's very scattered versus a hundred that has a lot of them now you notice that when you're erasing it'll do that that's just part of UE5 I don't know how to fix that this radius is how far away it has to be in a circle from the previous instance of it. So if I bump this up to like a thousand and you notice I left it at a hundred so it should be as dense but it won't be. They won't be within a thousand unreal units of each other. So it lets you have more evenly spaced things. I went on a side tangent. Let's get to the part I was talking about. So right here in the placement there's this align to normal and that is what will have it. Let's go back up here. Radius zero. So now, with that aligned to normal set to false, once I paint it up, they just go up. I prefer that personally, it just seems to look a little bit more natural. Uh, there is instances to where you wouldn't want that, so for instance, let's say you've got a forest, and then you want just a couple of trees that are leaned like that to add a more natural look to it. So you can click that align to normal, and then up here go in single instance mode, and then you got some leaning and some not. So, but yeah, what I've noticed in forests, I used to spend a lot of time in the woods, and um, there are trees that lean, but for the most part, they tend to grow straight up. Even if they're on a hill, they curve and grow up. They always move towards the sunlight. That's why you'll get trees kind of like this, to where they growing out of the side of a mountain and still going up. It's because they always go towards the sunlight. Okay, so there's some other things. Um, one issue you'll notice is if I place some trees right here, they all are the same exact height, which is unrealistic, and you can run straight through them, which I don't have to tell you. That's you know, not normal. You don't, you know, trees usually have solidity. So, yeah, you can't do this, like Casper phasing through. Hello. No, that doesn't happen. Uh, the way we can fix that is if you scroll all the way down to the instance settings, you can set it to where, like, the grass you would want to set to does not cast a shadow just to save on performance. 
the trees you would want but down here is the collision and you can custom you got all your collision settings just like any other item now I don't think it's gonna affect oh yeah it does it affects this one oh it affects that one too much okay but that's actually an issue with the mesh itself so for instance these pine trees straight in the infinity blade pack uh, if you have that issue let's double click and open it up the problem going on here is if you look at its simplified collision which everything uses uh, pretty much automatically it's egregious <laughs> but the way to fix that is let's go to collision let's remove the collision then what we can do is we can do an auto convex collision select that it's automatically right here but if it's not if you don't see this convex decomposition thingy right here then it's you just click that then you just hit apply and you know it's not much better you can adjust these properties to get the best result but that's looking a lot better than it was with that weird prism thingy so now when I go in I can actually at least get closer to the trees so yeah there's that uh, let's see Oh, scalability, there's enabled density scaling. So, um, this is if you want, so for instance you have, where is it at here? Blueprint Cinematics Tools, no. Wherever you go to find the engine scalability settings, so I forget where that's at, in the new version, tools, uh, engine scalability, where are you at? Well, I'll find it and do an update. But uh, you can make it to where if the per if the player needs to drop the scalability settings because it's having trouble chugging along, then you can make it to where some foliage disappears based off of this. Okay, so like I was talking about a second ago, you wouldn't want the trees to all be the same height. What you can do is there's this scale X and you can set a minimum and a maximum and this will be the scale size that it picks between so like if you went 0.8 and 2 so minimum is 0.8 of its normal size and max is double so then you let me let me thin them out a little bit so that it's not as dense so now you can see I got some shorter some taller it adds a little bit more you know variety because not all trees are going to be the exact same height okay now this Z offset in the placement I feel like I'm just jumping back and forth I'm sorry uh, the Z offset is how far down or up it's going to be so like if I set Z offset minimum maximum let's say I want it to be between 0 and 100 you'll see some of these trees are floating now because it'll be anywhere between 0 and 100 units off the ground but now if I set this to say negative 10 and negative 25 this can oh right <laughs> so the minimum the maximum goes both ways so the maximum Anyway, now you'll see they kind of go under the ground a little bit. So if you're having issues with uh, certain meshes floating, you can just knock it down under the ground a little bit. So if I go like negative 5, then I can kind of have it bleed into the dirt a little bit, but not too much. It's just in case you're having like light getting under it. Although for the most part, the... Oh, yeah, see, well, okay. Yeah, see, like this one is floating oh they're all floating a little bit so yeah I guess probably setting that to negative 5 default would be a good idea not that you would really be able to tell in game very easily but still
So there's that. Um, to get rid of all of these. Now the way you erase, I don't know if that's, um, you just hold shift. So just left clicking will paint and shift left clicking deletes them. I don't know what that is. The random yaw. This will have a random rotation, so that way it's not always the exact facing the exact same direction. So just I'm gonna use this tree to show a little bit better. So you can see how some of these branches are pointing this way and others are pointing that way. It's because it has a randomized yaw. Yaw. And then this is another instance probably moving it. Oh, no, that one goes underground pretty good. So, see, different trees do differently. That one looks pretty good, though. Now, as far as for the oak tree and the oak tree canopy, like, say you wanted to use both of those at once, what you can do is you can create a blueprint actor that has these applied to each other. And, um... Then the way you can add is, let's add a foliage type. I'm going to add an actor foliage. And this will be my green bush FT foliage type. And the reason I'm using that one is because it's the same basic principle. So you would create a blueprint actor that has this and the canopy aligned. And then you would do this process. So I'm just going to, at the very top for the actor class, this will be my green herb and then the best part about this is when I place when I place a bunch there it goes so when I place a bunch of them I can still execute their blueprint commands even though they're instance or foliage instances so I'm still able to pick them up just like that Oh, it's because, okay, the blueprint actor seems to come with some density and radius settings automatically. Um, as for the scale, you would probably want to handle that inside the blueprint itself to randomize the scale of the mesh. That way it doesn't randomize the scale of the, the interact radius of it. But yeah, so those are a bunch of the settings that you can go through if you want it to have collision or all that jazz. Should what should attach to base comp yeah you want that okay so that's just like it'll attach to the the default component I believe but yeah that's just some things to think about when you're getting ready to paint some foliage when you want to beautify your landscapes or spookify them or whatever you know make them creepy with those dead trees etc etc. I'm just going to get rid of all these real quick. Except for my Scala man. Keep him from my Scalum plans. Get out of here. So, yeah, there's some level design stuff. You can use all these trees the same way. You know, just customize them over in your panel, get them ready to go. You can, um, so like if you got a bunch of stuff selected for it, I, I wouldn't say do grass and trees at the same time because grass and trees would have different densities, but you can set each one's density and radius, have a bunch of different ones going. So for instance, I want this one to be like two, this one to be like five, and I'll go ahead and add this one back on and that one can be one so you can have a variety of trees painted up and you have them in different density levels just by altering that one parameter really make a nice looking forest pretty quickly it's 
So you will need to go through and do the same uh, collision settings on all of them. A lot of these trees you might just have to, let's see, so like if I go down and I just set this to block all on the creepy trees then hopefully the collision settings are good enough to where it won't need to be fiddled with. Yeah, so a lot of the trees will be decently set up already as far as collision goes. Just some of them are kind of funky like that one was. So if I do the same thing on this one. Then hopefully it's not got the big invisible. Yeah, so it's looking good. Now one thing another well another thing I say, I say one thing uh, another thing to think about is if you're running through the forest <coughs> sorry and you don't want that camera getting all jankified like that then what you can do is you can actually instead of saying block all <coughs> you can set it to custom Sorry, I tried to get the camera or the 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 microphone away for that. Okay, so you can set the collision to custom. No. And then if you need to move this this way, you can set so it'll ignore your camera. And I'm gonna just do that for all of them real quick. So ignore camera, custom, ignore camera. And then when I run up to them, then it doesn't you know, mess with my visibility when I'm running through. So, because yeah, sometimes that can mess with players. Although you will have to be careful. Oh, no, it worked out. Okay, so I figured this fat tree was going to have like clipping through issues, but it seems to work decent. Because that can mess with people. Some people have like uh, visual issues to where camera jumping at them back and forth can mess with them. So just things to think about. So all right. I will get to designing my level. I wanted to do everything on camera. But also I feel like that would maybe just be like a waste of time on y'all's end. Because... But I don't know, I'm going back and forth on it. So if you'd like to see me design the level, then let me know. Or if you'd rather just be like, skip to the next part, then let me know. So other than that, I will see y'all in the next one. And pretty soon I'm going to have a new little sub-series thing going on where I break down other people's games and just take a look at what they've done and talk about what I think the thought process behind it might be and ways we could recreate it if we like the effect or whatever. So that's, that's something I've wanted to do for a while and it sounds fun. So if that sounds interesting, let me know on that too. <laughs> so, all right, I will see y'all in a bit. Goodbye.